Blender 4.2 is already shaping up to be a massive update with a lot of really cool new features, including the Ray Portal node. The Ray Portal node allows us to access portals within the Blender shader menu, opening up the possibility for some really interesting effects and illusions. In this video, we'll talk about the basics of what the Ray Portal node is, and then we're also going to create this illusionary effect where as you rotate this cube, you can see into multiple scenes from different angles. I'll also spend a portion of this video pointing you to some other tutorials that dive deeper into the vector math and the complexities of the node if you'd like to go further after this tutorial. But with that being said, let's dive in. All right, to get to the good stuff, we first have to kind of go through this boring example of how the Ray Portal node works. So here we just have a cube down here and up here we just have a plane called Portal, which is a regular shader on it. We're going to go ahead, delete that default, drag this out and add a, a portal. And at first, nothing cool is going to happen. It's just going to look like a transparent shader, but we can control the position and the direction of our portal here from within the shader. So let's show what that looks like. Let's go ahead here, add a texture coordinate, and then we'll drag off the object and add it to a mapping vector node. And then if we go ahead and plug this into the position, you'll see that suddenly it cuts off. And if we move around there, we can see that we're getting this weird effect. Well, the actual plane here is two meters in the sky. So when we unplug that, we just see right through it, but now we're altering the position. So we're now we're telling it via the shader that we are actually appearing at zero meters. So if I was to bump this up to two meters, you'll see that it gets the same exact effect. So we're actually kind of moving the position of the portal there. You can see how I'm moving up and down in the space there. Let's go ahead and set that to two. And you can see that we can begin altering some of these, including rotating the effects, which can cause some glitches in some instances. And you can see that we can move it around and you can see how very quickly this can become powerful. Likewise, we can also change the direction here as well and get some pretty interesting effects. Now let's look at a bit more of a complicated setup. Just a quick shout out to my Patreon. I've been posting project files like this on my Patreon, and I've also been doing some kind of breakdowns and walkthroughs of my short film, if you'd like to see that as well. But let's get back to the tutorial. Now, if you wanna follow along with me, you can. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a plane here and we're going to bring this up on the Z axis, and we're going to add a new material to it. We're going to call that material portal one. So if you want to recreate this effect, this is the part of the tutorial where you'll want to follow along. So you may want to make sure you have 4.2 downloaded. We're going to grab that portal material on our plane there. And what we can do is just delete that, drag out the surface, and we're going to add a rare portal. Now we're going to do some interesting vector math here. And I actually discovered this math node set up from CG Matter, who has an entire video diving into like how vector math works with these nodes specifically. So credit to him for figuring out the setup. For now, let's begin kind of our node setup here. So let's add a tangent node here. We're gonna change this to a UV map and we're going to select UV map. Now, if you're following along with me, the default UV map on the plane should work for you. Now, what we can do is add a geometry node and we will duplicate that geometry node and set that down here. And then what we'll do is we will grab that geometry node and we are going to do normal, drag that off and choose cross product. And that'll put it into the top node there of a vector math. We're gonna take that tangent and put that into the bottom there. Perfect. Now what we're going to do is drag off the incoming here and put this into a vector math scale. Perfect. And we wanna make sure that that is in the top and then we're going to do negative one. Perfect. Now we can grab that, drag this vector off into a dot product and make sure this is plugged into the bottom. And then we're going to duplicate this one three times. And you're going to plug that scale into the bottom of all three, just like that. Then grab the normal from the geometry here. And for the bottom one, plug it into the top vector of the dot product there. For the middle dot product here, we're going to take this cross product math node that we have and plug that into the top. And then for this last one up here, we're going to take that tangent and plug that into the top. Now we have three coordinates that we can combine into a new vector system. So hit Shift A, look for Combine X, Y, Z, and then you're going to plug them in top, middle, and bottom accordingly. Now we have all these that we can plug into the direction. And right now you're gonna see that not much here has changed quite yet. So to finish it off and give us some control, we're going to add a texture coordinate. We're going to drag that object off into a mapping vector node, and they're gonna drag that vector and put it into the position. 
By default here, it's going to give us a black result. And that's because we are inside of this cube we have here. We could go ahead and move that cube down and you can see how it's offset. So this is now sitting at the zero, zero position. So you can either move this up on the math node so that it sits above it, but I prefer to leave this at zero and we're just going to move our cube down. So I'm gonna come over here to the 3D viewport, switch to the side view here. And if we move our 3D cube down here, we'll see that now it appears in there. And what we're basically getting right now is almost a one-to-one -one because we have the plane up here, but according to the shader, it thinks that the plane is essentially sitting like this. So now what we can do is grab this box right here. We'll grab this top face here and we'll press I to inset that ever so slightly and extrude down inwards like that. And you can see that now we are looking into this little room, just like that. And because of that nice math zone setup that we got from CG Matter, we can take this and we can move it anywhere. And you can see that we can look around and we can rotate this and we can look into our little room there. So now you can place whatever you want in this little room and create that cube effect. Let me show you how I set that up a little bit more. Okay, so now we have this right here called Portal 1. Let's name this plane here, Portal 1, just like its shader name. And then we're going to duplicate this plane and move it over on the X axis. So let's name this one Portal 2. And you can move this wherever you want, but just for simple math, I'm gonna go ahead and move this on the X axis five meters. So now this is positioned over here. So let's go ahead, grab this cube down here. I'm gonna hit Shift D, and let's also move this one over five. Now let's make these different colors just so that we can make this for illustration purpose. Perfect. So you can see that even though we've moved this plane over, it's still positioned here because of the shader. So we actually want this portal here to view inside of this cube. So we'll come to the shader menu there, and then we can grab this portal node here. We'll click new. Let's name this portal two. And then we need to just move the position of our shader portal over this cube right here. And since we did that simple math of five, we only need to move it over five on the X. And now we can see that it's there. So you can see just that shifting this just kind of moves it from one to the other. So if we move that there, the portals are now positioned directly above these cubes. So you can use each one of these cubes to build out your environment or your set or your scene. And we can kind of create that depth parallax effect. Let me show you how to use these planes and put them together. So let's add a Suzanne mesh inside of these cubes, just to make this a little bit more obvious. We'll make one that way, and then we'll rotate this one 90 degrees so that we can see they are different. So now you can take these planes and then you can go ahead and use them to build your own cube. So I'm going to move these planes off to the distance here, and I'm going to hit Alt-R, make sure that the rotation set. I'm going to rotate these up 90 degrees on the X axis. Then I'm going to rotate one of these 90 degrees on the Z axis, it's negative 90 degrees there. And then we can match these up here so that the reverts are matched up there. And then now when we look at these planes, you can see that as we rotate around these planes, we are able to see inside of our cubes. So I showed you how to set up the shader, but you might be wondering how I went about creating a more complicated setup like this. Well, let me show you, it's actually pretty simple. If I go into my top view mode here, you can actually see that my cube and the planes, which I've already taught you how to set up, are just sitting over here off to the side. And then you can see out in space here, I've imported my environments. So rather than just filling up those cubes, you can just import your environments or model or whatever you want to toss in front of those other portals and then just go ahead and move them around and rotate them until you get them somewhere you're happy. So you can see here, I have everything parented to the floor and I can just move that floor around until I get it at an angle I'm happy with. And then I can go and rotate around to view in there. So it's pretty simple. Just toss everything you want in front of those portal placements. Now, as I mentioned, I wanted to point you to some other resources to dive a bit deeper on this node. As I mentioned earlier in the video, Default Cube or CG Matter, already has a video up on this. I accredited that and I'll link it below. An incredible deep dive into just the vector math of how everything works. He does a really good job of explaining it. Another YouTube channel that always has amazing artwork is Cartesian Caramel. I believe I'm pronouncing that correctly. And on this channel, there's already a couple videos up 
doing some really cool effects. In particular, I love this portal effect that's being done on the channel. And there's already a couple other things as well. They're live streams, so they're just real-time walkthroughs of the process. Very cool stuff. Definitely recommend checking out this channel as well. I'm really excited to see what you create from this. So please tag me at Southern Shoddy so I can follow along.